Uh, thank you uh, for the introduction. It's nice to come back to Berkeley. Uh, I actually uh, worked at UC Berkeley for two years as a postdoc with uh, Professor Ron Chen and also uh, YT Lee. Uh, I remember when I was uh, uh, a postdoc here, there was another professor uh, at the chemistry department, uh, Professor Hudebrand. Hudebrand right? He was over 100 years old. And he still came into work. Uh, and his postdoc <laughs> uh, was uh, 90 years old. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so I hope that uh, Eli will work here till he's uh, 100, and I can come back as a postdoc. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, how it happened. Uh, so I went to Harvard in 1973, a long time ago, and, uh, and uh, Professor Bloomberg was my advisor. And I passed a qualifying exam, and then uh, uh, Nicole asked me, well, which system do you want to work with? Uh, we, we had many laser systems at the time uh, doing nonlinear optics. And uh, it's either the YAG laser or the CO2 laser. And I picked the CO2 laser system, and Eli was in charge. Uh, Eli joined uh, at uh, 95, uh, 8, 75, something? 74. 74. Anyway. We had a good time together working in the lab uh, on uh, many, many different topics. And uh, uh, Eli was beginning his uh, academic career. And uh, now, uh, after so many years in the academic world, I understand that uh, at the time, he must be very anxious, uh, looking for various uh, fields, uh, trying to make an uh, impact, uh, trying to make his tenure. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the first paper I published with him uh, in 75. Uh, is uh, a uh, system that makes, that made uh, very high power picosecond CO2 laser pulses based on his earlier work on a laser plasma interaction using plasma as a switch. And this is the uh, last paper published with him in 81 that's uh, on uh, Another topic uh, on multiphoton absorption in uh, SF6. So you can see that uh, we worked on many different topics uh, during that time, uh, from uh, 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 picosecond laser physics to nonlinear optics and semiconductors to uh, plasma physics, actually trying to make uh, lasing in a plasma, and, uh, and then laser chemistry, multiphoton absorption, laser isotope separation, that kind of stuff. So Eli was, and still is, extremely talented. Many, many different ideas, wild ideas all the time. Uh, and of course, he taught me a lot of uh, skills in the lab. And one thing I appreciated, <laughs> he never asked me for results. <laughs> uh, the same goes for uh, Professor Blumbergen. I was not productive at the time, uh, in the beginning. And uh, there was no pressure. I was just uh, uh, can work in the lab uh, or not work in the lab. <laughs> so uh, together, we explored many different topics. Uh, and uh, Eli was always searching for uh, new ideas and new topics that can generate impact and uh, make a big name. And <laughs> One thing I, I remembered, this, this is a long time ago, but uh, we usually work in the lab. Uh, I usually went to the lab late afternoon, <laughs> and then we worked together, and then we, many, many times we, we had uh, dinner together. And uh, I noticed that he always, uh, after dinner, he always buy, he bought a bag of chips or something. To, it's not very healthy, <laughs> come to think of it. <laughs> I hope that Karen is. <laughs> Hope that uh, Karen has uh, corrected that habit. So uh, I, uh, there are some uh, 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 sayings from Eli that I can still remember after so many years. And that, by the way, is not a picture of Eli. <laughs> uh, that's a picture of me, actually, uh, as a guinea pig. Now, one thing he, 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 he said in the beginning was uh, the best way to learn was to, to teach. And uh, the only course I took uh, from Eli was a course that uh, he taught for the first time. 
in plasma physics. And uh, in many lectures, I could tell that he, he, just, he just learned the material the day before. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was a good course. I learned something uh, about uh, plasma, or uh, local thermodynamic uh, equilibrium, and things, like, things like that. So obviously, he was very interested in plasma physics at the time. Also, he, uh, he, he said that uh, uh, if you stay in the same area for a long time, it's not a good idea. Now, I don't remember what's N, maybe 5 or 10? Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, it's a good idea to, to switch your field or switch your topic, not your field, uh, once in a while. Uh, and, and Eli did that. And I, I also did it myself in my career, coming, come to think of it. Uh, a rolling stone gathers a lot of moss. That's uh, a better saying. So from the uh, symposium today, you can see that uh, Eli is involved in many, many different areas and is making, has made impact in all of them. So uh, a little bit about what I'm doing now. Uh, I'm now uh, teaching at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, which is over here. Uh, after, uh, actually, I, I taught at the State University of New York in uh, Buffalo for 13 years before I went back to Hong Kong. And uh, a little bit about just a couple of slides about uh, some of my research. And that's a reflection of, of the diversity that Eli's uh, 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 students are involved in. So one of the earlier uh, topics that I worked on in, in Hong Kong was uh, silicon micro displays. And the idea is, is that uh, you can make IC to work for you in display. Uh, IC technology, we all know that is uh, very sophisticated, many foundries and uh, very high resolution. So in order to make high resolution display, one idea is to make very high resolution display on the IC chip itself. And then uh, use uh, optical projection to, to produce the high resolution display. That idea was actually started by uh, IBM uh, back in 1991. And remember, back in 1991, there was no TFT LCD. And this, uh, bet, uh, the best way to have high resolution display was actually to make the display on the second chip. Now that idea uh, went away because uh, TFT became available. Large panel display, it's now very cheap. Uh, but now, recently, in the last few years, uh, that idea has come back because uh, of, uh, of the availability of uh, LED high power light source. So we can now make very tiny pico, sec uh, pico projectors with a volume of one centimeter cube. And uh, you can embed such projectors in uh, cell phones, in cameras, and so on. So eventually, maybe every cell phone will have a projector like that. Uh, if provided that we can make a, a higher power uh, lumen output and have a higher efficiency. So right now, we can have a uh, optical uh, efficacy effic if efficacy of about 8 lumens per watt. If we can double that, then the uh, prediction is that a lot of cell phones will have uh, digital, uh, this uh, kind of pico projectors. And considering that, that 1.2 billion cell phones made every year, so this is going to be a big market. Now, at HKUST, I was, uh, uh, we started doing a micro display uh, uh, right after I went back to Hong Kong in 1993. So this is uh, the first model we made. Uh, it's a, as you can see, this is a penny. So this is a very small IC chip. You can have the, uh, all, the, all the drivers, all the ADC, all the uh, multiplexers, everything integrated on the chip. So it's a completely system on chip uh, with a display and drivers. You can see the quality of the picture is quite good. And actually, in, uh, we in, improved in, in resolution uh, and, and uh, just learned from Eli as well. One of his, also one of his saying uh, is that uh, no, EE no self-respecting EE professor doesn't have a company of his own. <laughs> so I started a couple of companies uh, along the way, and this is one of the companies that, that makes uh, such micro displays. Uh, recently, we have another company that, will, that actually makes the optical system 
to make such projectors. Eventually, uh, right now the, the, uh, the light source is shifting from LED to actually laser diode. Uh, laser diodes are now actually uh, quite cheap and can be used as a projector light source. Uh, on the scientific side, uh, I am also involved with a lot of other projects. Uh, one of them, of course, uh, has to do with the, uh, the title of this symposium, Photons and Electrons. So we, we also make use of light to do alignment of liquid crystals. And that actually will be the technology in the future. Right now, the, all the uh, liquid crystal displays are made by rubbing of uh, alignment layers. And uh, in the future, that rubbing will, will be replaced by photo alignment, I hope. So uh, this is not cliche. Confuci Confucius actually said this. And, and this uh, Confucius. <laughs> <laughs> this is from, actually from his book. It's not from a fortune cookie. <laughs> it's actually from his book, Analyx. Uh, let me try to translate that. So Confucius was asked to summarize his life. And he said this. At 15, I became seriously interested in studying. Okay, and at 30, I established a reputation for myself. And at 40, now nothing will puzzle me. I know everything. At 50, I know my destiny, my place in history. And at 60, nothing could bother me anymore. And at 70, I could do whatever I, I wanted. So Eli, I think he, uh, he was uh, uh, a prodigy. He entered McGill at 15 or something, around 15. So, so in high school, he was fooling around. So at 15, when he uh, got into college, he got seriously, uh, got serious in studying. <laughs> and at 30, he was already an uh, uh, associate professor at Harvard, so he got he established a reputation for himself. And at 40, uh, he was working on solar cells and photonic crystals and all these things. So he, he knew that he was uh, going to be famous. So at 50, <laughs> he knew his destiny. So uh, at, at 60, he moved to Berkeley because uh, nothing could bother him anymore. So why not move to Berkeley? <laughs> <laughs> So Eli can uh, write his own uh, biography, finish this at 80, at 90, at 100. As I said, he should be here, he's still in Berkeley at 100, so I can come back as a postdoc. <laughs> so, uh, happy birthday. Uh, this is a uh, picture we took uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we have an annual uh, Chinese New Year dinner. And this is not my whole group. My whole group is just one half of this. Uh, the other half is uh, past graduates of my group uh, who came back for the dinner. So happy birthday, and uh, that's me. The part that I really like about Confucius is I could do whatever I want to do, <laughs> except nobody told me I had to wait until 70, so, so I kept doing whatever I wanted to do all along. That's great. All right, thanks for a really uh, uh, interesting remark.